As always, please keep in mind that I am not a financial advisor. The content on this channel and on my website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm giving you the third part of my three-part series of Capital and Counties, and this part will be the outlook and my thesis. So this will be mainly my thoughts, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. In the short term, we can expect a lot of volatility because we are still in challenging times. Uh, with the short term, I'm thinking about a period of like uh, between now and a year, so 12 months. And um, yeah, a lot of volatility is to be expected in the share price because of this. It could go up, could go down. I don't make any forecasts in that regard, as you guys know. Um, but with challenges also come opportunities and in the previous video I've already shared with you one opportunity they have capitalized upon and uh, who knows what they will find in the in the next 12 months maybe something small because I would appreciate that they don't use too much of their liquidity even though as long as they use their credit facilities I don't think it's that much of a big deal but yeah that, that's me personally it's still debt so it's something to keep in mind in the midterm we can expect a recovery to net asset value. Right now, the net asset value is per share is about 240 pence, so about 60%, uh, or the share price is about 60% lower than the net asset value. I think we can see a recovery in one to three years uh, in the towards this net asset value, and I think it could be um, like. I th like uh, from uh, like 105 to 240, I, that's about a 130 uh, percent increase. So about a capital or a capital, I mean a compound annual growth rate of about 30 percent, I'd say. Um, on current share price, of course, I will not be able to achieve that because I've bought at higher ranges as well. But I think net asset, net asset value uh, in the midterm, let's say three years, something like that. I think that is uh, more than likely. And in the long term, I actually expect that the net asset value will appreciate. Like, um, I believe it was uh, two years ago or maybe one year ago where the net asset value was uh, of, um, what's it called, Covent Garden. I believe it was valued at about 300 pence per share. So uh, assuming that the real estate will keep increasing, uh, the, the assets will be increasing in value over time i think that we can in the long term we can see a net asset uh valuation appreciation a net asset value appreciation so i think that's pretty good and um keep in mind that the this company already took a hit from the brexit uh not the deal but the brexit decision based in 2016 or 2015 like the end um so that's when it also lost a lot of value because yeah, there was just a lot of uncertainty. The moment, um, like I think in the long term, like not not even midterm, I think in the long term we will see what the impact of Brexit is, and I believe that some uncertainty will be taken away from this investment as well. And I think we could see some appreciation in that regard, in that regard as well. So for me personally, I have three rules for real estate, so this is going to be part of my thesis. Um, first one is quality company mission, also known as strategy and stuff like that. So um, if there is a business that is just saying we are going to own a lot of uh, uh, housing, for example, then like for me, that's not quality. It doesn't have a lot of weight. Like what I'm looking for is someone with actually like a vision. So, okay, you know, we want to own sure quality assets but that's also very broad but we want to make it very particular in a very particular area and this is why and we and you know have a reason behind that so in this regard uh, or, or in this case uh, capco has uh, the company mission of owning high quality and valuable real estate in west end london for me that is a quality company mission for a real estate business um or a read is actually a read um, so yeah second one is I want the, the business the REIT to be able to capitalize on opportunities like I don't want them to in a downturn 
sure, every company that I invest in, I hope they survive, but I don't want that to be their their drive. I don't want their main focus to be, okay, we have to survive, we have to do whatever it takes to survive. No, I want them to also be able to see some opportunities. And as you guys know from the previous video, yes, they have been able to acquire similar assets uh, in the region through some share price uh, buying from Shaftesbury PLC. And the second, or the second, the third rule is I want the company to be undervalued compared to their net asset value. And this might seem like an obvious one, but I think that a lot of people are willing to forego this part if it's a very high quality real estate. So let's say if you want to buy uh, real estate in New York or something like that, then because people will expect appreciation over time, they don't mind if it's not uh, undervalued. And I would say, no, it always has to be undervalued on some metric. Um, like I, I believe um, it doesn't have to be like 50% undervalued per se, but you should be able to notice a discount and keep in mind that net asset value is still based on estimates from accountants and stuff like that from people who do the audit and yeah, based on economic circumstances, they can drop. But from, I believe that net asset value uh, in the past actually has some value in that regard because you can expect them to at least return to that level if you have high quality assets that is because that is some that's the main point and that's why i uh, listed it um there as well like with quality company mission like you want high quality assets as well so for my thesis um like we know my three main rules for reads um and keep in mind that I also, I, I have my focus on geographical REITs more than uh, a specific uh, asset read, but um, that's just my preference. But uh, yeah, everybody should pick whatever fits them best, of course. And this is basically the price range that I expect from um, this this company, so from Capco. So under 100, like insane, insanely cheap. Um, I couldn't make one with very, very undervalued or extremely undervalued, I guess. But um, yeah, I, b I believe that uh, between 100 and 150 is very undervalued and, and, below, and even further down the road is extremely undervalued compared to what they own. I think it's still undervalued between 150 and 250. Like, sure, you might think, okay, net asset value is 240. Um, how can you say that this is still undervalued if it's like 250 or right at 250 maybe? But as I said, like they have um, revalued their assets several times throughout these past four years. And yes, I just believe that what they own it right now, even at current share price, I believe it's worth more than, than this. Um, so I think between 250 and 350, I think it's fair valued. And uh, on current net asset valuation and stuff like that, and the share price, I would say after 350, it's overvalued and after 450, it's very overvalued. And uh, since I tend to just focus to, on focus on the um, on the net asset value in this regard, so I'm not taking any dividend into account, I would say that above 500 is going to be very overvalued. Doesn't mean that uh, this is again this is based on the net asset value of today, and like as the net asset value will appreciate over time, which I do expect, as I mentioned before, in the next three years, I will expect that fair value will move a bit onwards. Um, I, I wouldn't say between 350 and 450 or something, but I would say between 300 and 400 that that would be or could be considered fair value. So that's it for my valuation thesis, but there's one more thing, and that is the potential currency appreciation. So I'm from the Netherlands, so my main currency is the euro, and ever since the, um, uh, the Brexit voting happened, um, the, the British pound has been dropped significantly compared to the euro. So if you look at a chart here, you see that it was once I had to, for one pound sterling, you had to get like almost like 142 euro. And right now it's uh, at 110 right here. So it has dropped significantly and it's right now still trading at lower level. And I know there's a lot of, um, uh, I want to say polarization regarding the Brexit. And 
yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not that sure whether or not it's gonna be good for uh, the UK, but I have a feeling that at some point uh, the the pound will be strong again compared to the other currencies. So I, I do think that there is a, a chance of having a potential currency appreciation. Is that guaranteed? Of course not. And currencies are a very challenging thing to do. But I think. If you buy in, in something like this, uh, I think this is uh, very important because let's say you invest in any other business, they tend to have uh, companies or like business all over the world. So their currencies are going to fluctuate anyway based on where they make deals and how um, how the currency has been or how the exchange rate of the specific currencies have been moving. So that's a bit of a challenging part normally, but you don't really get to experience that because yeah, they do it let's say worldwide, like uh, Apple, Microsoft, they all have worldwide deals. So currency won't be that much of a deal. But if you invest in a particular country that is in a particular zone and that has uh, basically only one currency of income, then if you invest in that company with another currency, then currency is something to take into account. So for me, this was the a previous reason to invest in this company as well, because obviously um, in the 219 uh, range, it was also undervalued compared to the 142 in November 2015. And yeah, it's, it's still going going strong in that regard. We're still having a, a stronger euro compared to the pound. So all in all, this could be uh, like not a yeah I would almost say a multiplier. It could potentially increase your uh, your the how do you say that? The increase of the of the company, the, the share price. So just something to keep in mind. And finally, um, so where would I put this? Because I own this company, Capco. Uh, where would I put it on my um, business or my portfolio? And if you haven't seen this before, this I posted this on my blog a few months ago, and um, that's where I left it as well. Um, so. I want about 60% in my own businesses, but they can take some time. DGOC is an own business in my uh, in my opinion. Like I believe that I can hold that for the very long future, 10 plus years. And um, I am contemplating about this uh, Capco in this regard. Like initially it's gonna be deep, deep value. Um, I would say value growth as well. So deep value slash value growth. So it's gonna be in my 20% mark which are most of my assets are right now because I believe that's where the opportunities are. Um, however, it may move into the future towards own businesses because um, it really depends how they grow. So for my own businesses, I really want my, I want the underlying business to grow at the same rate of my uh, goal uh, return, which is 15% per year. And I'm not sure any read can achieve that, but I, I we have to see how this turns out. Like we have to see how the uh, how how the UK will recover from all of this, and if if the if London is going to be still booming and maybe the real estate will still increase and they are still acquiring companies, then maybe I could see a 15% increase in this company. I do really like the company. Uh, I do like the insider holdership, insider buying, and stuff like that. So. It, it has the potential to move to that part. I will never take a stake in it like DGOC, but I could increase my stake. I have already increased my stake, but uh, my stake. But um, yeah, it could be uh, an own business, that's for sure. So that's it for today, guys. This was uh, a three part series of Capital Counties. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't checked out the previous parts, uh, feel free to do so. Um, if you like this kind of video, please leave a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. And I will. The next video I'll be making is about Shell, I believe. It will be like a four-part series, I think. So it's gonna be uh, that will be at least my next video series. I will have some other videos coming up that will be uh, not about stock analysis, but maybe just something in between, like tomorrow or actually today when this video comes out. I will also be making a video about DGOC because they will report their quarterly earnings. So that's it for the case for today guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys tomorrow.